This is one of a multiple videos showing you how to download, install, and configure a GNS3 on a Windows 10 PC. In the previous video, I showed you how to download and install the GNS3 graphical user interface. If you haven't watched that video, I suggest you do that first. I've added a link below this video. Once you have GNS3 installed, you may want to run a Cisco iOS image in your GNS3 topology. So what I'm gonna do here is create a new project called iOS Local. In this example, we're gonna run a router image locally with the GNS3 GUI. We're not using the GNS3 VM in this example. Notice when I select routers, I'm told that no routers are configured. We can look at the documentation to see how to configure this, but I'm gonna demonstrate through this video how to configure Cisco iOS images on GNS3. Notice the following, you must provide your own router images in order to use GNS3. You can find a lot of great information about GNS3 on the documentation. So you can search for options such as iOS or where do I get iOS images? This is one of the most often asked questions. Where do I get a Cisco iOS image? Now it's important to take note of the following. Due to legal requirements, neither I nor GNS3 can give you Cisco iOS images. Some vendors such as Cumulus Networks or Arista make their software images freely available. So you can simply download those images from their websites. But unfortunately, Cisco doesn't do that. So how do you get an image? The first way is to download images directly from the Cisco website. So go to the Cisco Software Navigator and download the software that you require for the router platform that you wanna run in GNS3. I'll talk more about router platforms in a moment. Now the problem here is that you need a service contract. You need to have the correct permissions to download an image from the Cisco website. If you don't have that, you may be interested in purchasing Viral. A Viral allows anyone to purchase a yearly license and get access to Cisco iOS images. These are some of the best images to get, such as iOS V, which is a router image, iOS V layer two, which is a switch image, iOS XR, CSR 1000V, Nexus OS V, and the Cisco ASA. So if you can afford to buy a license at $200 a year, this is a great option. If that's not possible, you can get physical Cisco router images from a router like a 3725. So you could buy a router on eBay as an example and take that image and use it within GNS3. There are a lot of illegal images floating around the internet and it's not recommended because of licensing laws and all the legal ramifications that you download those images. So the best option is to buy a viral license or if you work for a Cisco partner, download an image from the Cisco website. Otherwise, get an image off a physical router. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to run a Cisco iOS image on Dynamips. This is the older way of doing it. So older images can run within Dynamips on your local PC. The recommendation today, however, is to use viral images on the GNS3 VM but GNS3 gives you many options. You may prefer to use an older image locally within GNS3 and not use viral images and perhaps not use the GNS3 VM. So there are various images that you can use which are listed in the documentation. To use iOS 15 images, you need to use a Cisco 7200 image. Other images are end of life and don't run iOS version 15. 
Again, the best way to do this is to use a viral iOS image, which supports iOS 15. The recommended images to use if you decide to run GNS3 locally are 3640, 3660, 3725, 3745, and 7200. So in this example, what I'm gonna do is run a 3725 image locally within GNS3. In this example again, I've got GNS3 running on a Windows 10 PC. To add a Cisco iOS router to GNS3, go to Edit, Preferences. Under Dynamips, select iOS routers and click New. Browse to where your iOS image is stored. In this example, I've got it in my Downloads directory. I've got a 3725 Advanced Enterprise image. I'm gonna select that and click open. We asked whether we wanna decompress the image. Now this is recommended to allow the images to boot up quicker, so I'm gonna click yes. So the image is now decompressed. Click next. Name the router as you like. I'm gonna leave it at the default of CE3725 and click next. Now this is important. The default amount of RAM allocated to this router is 128 meg. That's not enough for this router platform. And I can verify that by clicking on this link, check for minimum and maximum RAM requirements. GNS3 takes me to the Cisco website and I can select image name and then paste the image name into the Cisco website and click search for images. Notice we told here that a 3725 Advanced Enterprise Services router requires 256 meg of DRAM. So back in GNS3, I'm gonna change that to 256 and click Next. We can now add network adapters. This really depends on the platform that you're using. In this example, I'll add a fast ethernet module and serial modules to slots on the router and click next. Because I've got serial modules, I can select WIC cards. So I'll insert those into the router. Again, this depends on the router platform that you're using. Click next. Idle PC values are really important, especially when you run real Cisco iOS images locally in GNS3. An idle PC value is displayed here if one is not displayed, click this button and then select the found idle PC value. You can run GNS3 without this value, but you run the risk of using 100% of your processor. So it's recommended that you have an idle PC value before you continue. I'm gonna click finish. So at this point, I've got a Cisco 3725 router added under the Dynamips menu. I'm gonna click OK. So now when I browse routers, I have a Cisco 3725 router available. And I could drag a router to the workspace. I'll drag another one to the workspace. And then what I'll do is connect those two routers using the first fast ethernet interface. Notice when I click on the router to connect interfaces, the various interfaces are shown. This is once again dependent on the router platform that you're using and the modules that you've inserted into the router. I'll stop adding interfaces, show the interface labels, and click Start to start up the routers, and then open up a console to both routers. So the routers are booting up. And you can see here that interfaces are coming up. I'll change the font on the two routers to make it easier to read. So here's router one, show IP interface brief. Shows us that no IP addresses are configured on the router. So what I'll do is go onto the FOST ethernet interface zero slash zero as per the diagram, and I'll no-shut the interface. 
and I'll add an IP address to the interface of 10.1.1.1 slash 24 mask. On router two, I'll do something similar. Go onto the FOST Ethernet interface, no shut it, and give the router an IP address of 10.1.1.2 slash 24 mask. So we should be able to ping from router two to router one. So ping 10.1.1.1, ping succeed, and on router one, ping 10.1.1.2, router one can ping router two. What I'll do here as well is create a loopback interface on router one of 1.1.1.1, and then I'll enable EIJRP in process 100 and enable EIJRP on all interfaces. Do something similar on router two, create a loopback of quadruple two slash 32 mask, enable EIJRP, autonomous system 100, and then enable EIJRP on all interfaces. As you can see, a neighbor relationship has been established. Show IP route shows us the routing table. And at this point, we should be able to ping the loopback of router one because that's advertised through EIJRP and we are able to ping the loopback. Show IP route on router one. We see the loopback of router two in the routing table and we should be able to ping the loopback of router two, which we can. So that was an example of how to configure Cisco IOS images in GNS3 and run them locally. At the moment, I only have the GNS3 GUI installed and configured. I don't have the GNS3 VM installed. Under Edit Preferences, we can see that we've got a Cisco 3725 router configured and running locally on my Windows PC. Now, once you've finished configuring your routers, don't forget to save the configuration. So copy running config, startup config, or, or use the old command WR to save the configuration. Now that the configuration is saved, I can stop my GNS3 topology and exit out of GNS3. GNS3 is then stopped, and I can close my PuTTY windows and shut my PC down or do whatever I need to. At a later stage, by double clicking on the GNS3 icon, I can launch GNS3 again And under recent projects, I can select my iOS local project that was previously configured. And my topology is brought back. I can see my interfaces. And when I start up my routers and open up a console to them, I can see that they've booted up. So router one has now booted up. Show IPEI JRP neighbors shows me that I have a neighbor relationship established, show IP route, shows me the routing table, and I can ping the loopback of router two. So because I saved the configuration previously, the GNS3 topology and configurations are stored, and I can reload them simply by starting up GNS3 once again. Don't forget to save your configs before you shut down your GNS3 topology you need to save your network device configurations as if you were working on a real router or switch. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.